What's up guys, this is Boom Boom Tisk. Thanks for tuning in. And behind me over here, we have our 1986 Toyota Cressida. Where do I begin? <laughs> so if you guys have been following the channel, you guys have seen updates on the van build. We've got the Chevy G20 van life build that we've been working on. We do also have the EK Civic that we got back up and running. But what I haven't showed you guys yet is this right here. This is our more recently acquired vehicle. It's a 1986 Toyota Cressida station wagon. We picked this up right before 4th of July. It's only got 88,000 miles on it as of right now. We picked it up, it had 86,000 miles. It was pretty low for the year. It basically sat in the garage for like 10 years. We're the third owner, so that's pretty cool. And it has all the paperwork, all the maintenance, all that stuff, receipts, all that. Just like everything you'd want when you buy an old used car. And so it was a gem. We've been looking for a Cressida for over a year. Always was fond of the Cressida, how it was like ahead of its time. Just really modern for 80s, but still very 80s, very distinctly 80s. And also a very comfortable car, a very practical car. Whole lot of room for stuff and not a lot of people are familiar with the fact that the Cressidas were also released as a wagon. And so a lot of people are not really sure. Um, they think it's a Maxima wagon or Camry wagon, or they just flat out have no idea what it is. The previous owner also gave us a bunch of extra spare parts, gave us an extra set of tail lights, mechanical antenna thing that like raises up when you start the car. And then this one, he also gave us the stock uh, four link suspension on it, gave us the stock intake. I don't know, pretty, probably missing, some, I am missing something else. Because he also gave us a replacement fender. <laughs> um, as you can see, this one's got a pretty good size dent in it. And it pretty much is gonna look exactly like this, except for it's missing this little stripe. But you didn't hear that from me. And if you see this car in person, you're not gonna notice. So, oh well. But besides that, he did also give us extra trim, like these pieces right here. Gave us like the extra covers under it, just a little bunch of miscellaneous stuff. So, again, it's like what more can you ask for, right? It's not exactly bone stock, but it remained as how we got it between July up until now, which is November. Right now it's on BC Racing coilovers in the front. It's got welded spindles done by a good friend of mine, Justin Goen, AKA Subtle Driver. So I'll probably make another video clip just showing more details about the coilover install process and all that. Um, shout out to TP Auto Repair for helping us out with the coilover job. The coilovers are currently maxed out in the front without touching too much of the preload. It's a family car, so we wanted it to be at a ride height, at least right now where we can drive it around without having to think too hard about it um, as far as like, you know, worrying about its scrape. And also with this wheel fitment, which we have here is the SSR Long Champs. They are 15 by seven and a half. And we have them on some Achilles tires, uh, sized 175 60R15s. You gotta love the automatic seat belts, man. Sometimes though, like, if you're not used to it, it'll like... If you're not ready. Yeah, it'll catch you off guard and it'll feel like it's about to choke your head off. <laughs> but um, this is the inside. And as you can see, man, like, this thing is super clean. Headliner's all in good shape. Sun visors, everything's there. Still got the OG Technics radio. No tears, the dash is in really good shape. It doesn't have the digi dash though. Not yet at least, but this is one of the things on my bucket list that I'm looking out for. Another good plus too is uh, we actually did get the AC to work. And so that was a night and day difference as far as the whole experience of using this car. And I'm just kind of not used to all this luxury. Yeah. It's probably the nicest car I've ever owned. <laughs> but yeah, this is our kicking area. Whenever we're out cruising at meets and stuff like that, We'll just pop the hatch open, sit back here, have ourselves a little picnic. It's a pretty chill spot, plenty of space, plenty of space for cargo. We've done one road trip in it so far to San Francisco, and it was like 
no problem at all just shoving everything in there the only problem is it doesn't have a cover for the cargo so that's why we keep all the blankets in there we just cover it try to keep it low-key looking on that note let's go take a look under the hood Anybody want to guess what's in there? Two G. No, not quite. <laughs> Normal stock 5 mg 2.8 liter straight six with a Rapid Champ intake. We've already done a bunch of maintenance to it. We've done a timing belt, water pump, got the AC to work. Pretty much everything that it would be due at this mileage at the 88,000 miles or so it's got. Still automatic transmission of course too. It's been pretty good to us so far with the exception of one night when the starter decided to fail. <laughs> and no we did not try to push start an automatic transmission. Of course not. Shit. Take a look over here and you also see the top hats of our BC coilovers. It's got the, the knob for shock adjustment and also amber plates maxed out, full negative for that stance. 88 Supra master brake cylinder because it's also running Supra front brakes. These are a little bit bigger than the MX-73 Cressida brakes, I believe. If you can take a look in there, you'll see a slotted rotor. Just a nice touch, especially with the open wheels. In the back over here, you'll also notice there's a disc brake. The rear end has been upgraded to a, I believe it was a first generation Supra. And the disc brakes and everything are also off of that. It's also got T3 four links and an adjustable panner bar, which was needed for when we lowered it to center up the axle and align it. I mean, that's pretty much it guys. It's just a simple car, simple family car to cruise in, take to meets, just drive around town. I've always been a fan of old Toyotas. Had a 95 Corolla as my first car that I had for a super long time that like was slammed and all fixed up. And that was where I pretty much learned how to work on cars. But I've always wanted something like this. And so, I don't know, what can I say? It's like living the dream. It's, it's like, I've also been the fan of, you know, Shaka Tan, Kaido Racer style, and this is definitely not slammed or anything like that, but I mean, I, I, it definitely has that vibe for me, like just that old school, and I don't know. It, <laughs> this isn't happening. <laughs> But yeah, so stay tuned. I'm gonna keep you guys posted on progress on this as well, um, as well as the van videos and the Civic videos. And just pretty much all the projects we got going on, which is definitely plenty, so you'll see. You'll see. And that's pretty much it. Peace.